Hello, Five Shark fam. I'm AJ, and this is Glenn. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly and Atlanta United and uh, pretty much the rest of the world. We are in 2024, and yes, it is. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of transfer rumors. There's some news with our actual players that are on the team, and they are having a ball really it seems like uh you know you have people getting married you have uh people getting pregnant it is that time of year <laughs> where you know it's uh it's not maybe quite cuffing season for some of the the players it's more you know they're uh they're starting a family season you know and so yes. but uh it is amazing uh and i think yeah we're, we're gonna have some fun in this episode but uh glenn from five takes from the five stripes is here much love to you guys uh you guys are killing it uh, in the off season as well with uh, the five aside check that out uh on the feed definitely if you have not it's uh yeah you know definitely some of the stuff that you know from the just the world of sports uh from pop culture anything that they want to talk about this off season is where you can listen in on that but uh but guys yes uh, before we get into the news and all that was uh, aforementioned, uh, definitely shouts out to the Patreon members, and uh, especially Gavin Marshall, Jordan Beck, Nal Faruqi, Andrew Ruwicki, and Chris James. Shouts out to you all for the love. But let's get into it then. Into the news. First bit is that Tiago Almada, he was called up for the U23s. Argentina side and uh, yeah I mean that's a given that's for sure but uh, a really familiar name is also in that squad in Rocco Rios Novo which uh, How about that? I know and he just uh, won a trophy with Phoenix Rising and so yeah you know that's uh, that makes sense maybe why he's also included in this for uh, Javier Mascarano Mascarano but uh, yeah you know definitely what a player to learn from, I would say, as well. My word. <laughs> yeah, My goodness. So, you know, that's amazing stuff uh, that he will, and he has been pretty much in the camp pretty much yeah. since the season has been over for Atlanta United. But, yep. uh, yeah, any thoughts on Teo Gomada and uh, his inclusion into the uh, U23s here? No, it's a total gimme. The only thing that surprises me about Tiago right now is that he's still here. Yeah. Um, you no know, rumors. it's... We no no real concrete rumors yet on on anything. We know he's a talent. We know clubs are looking. Last minute things can't come up. The January transfer window is crazier than the yeah. summer window, so it can happen. But there's a, a realistic possibility that he's with us at least until the summer. And I'm not sure anybody any of us really thought that was at all likely. Um, you know, six months ago. Right, for sure. And to speak on that, I mean, the lack of rumors, it's possible this, too, because, uh, you know, the, the likelihood that maybe some of the players that are ready in Europe are the ones that are uh, maybe looked at first. And then sure. you have, you know, a player of this caliber, of course, that's maybe yeah. near the end of the window gets a little bit more eyeballs because, OK, they missed out on the other targets. We're probably on the lower end of that scale of maybe... You know, not outpricing some of the uh, the higher tier uh, European clubs that can actually maybe afford uh, to make a move for Tiago Lomato as well. So yeah. definitely interesting, but uh, agreed. No rumors, and it's weird. Nothing. But Nothing. Uh, yep. Uh, moving on from that, Yorgos Yakumakis. He got married. Opa. He. Uh, hey, yeah. groom Yakumakis. Huh? Yes. Oh, nice. I love the. I love that pun. Uh, but yeah, basically, I mean, you know, it, it's odd that he wasn't married, actually. I thought he was originally, but, uh, you know, because he's got a family ready. And man, that, that party, uh, that that uh, that wedding party looked insane. Uh, I think ain't no party like a, like a Greek party, probably. Yes, but, sir. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure if, uh, if, you know, anyone's remotely Greek or has seen, I guess, the uh, big fat Greek wedding... I'm sure it's just a microcosm of what it actually is. 
but uh, I'm sure there's a lot more debauchery that actually happens than uh, what uh, what we see. But uh, yes, congratulations to uh, Yako Makis. And uh, happy for him. yeah, exactly. Because that yeah, you know he's. Uh, it shows that there are, you know, happy things in his life that's happening, and that's that's always... great, man. I, give me a happy striker. Mm -hmm. I want a happy striker. Players oh. that are happy do good things. Oh yes, for sure. And speaking of Saba Lapsenice, he and his partner yes. are now pregnant, which uh, yeah, that bodes well. I think uh, if you know someone's kind of, uh, I guess, what's the word? I mean, but digging roots in. Uh, Atlanta and you know that's uh, it's definitely gonna make that a little bit more permanent at least for a yeah. little bit of time so totally if you're if you're you know m making a family you're, you're happy with where you're at you know it, it's a good sign again happy footballers man like mm -hmm. bring it I, I want my players here to be happy and for their families to be happy yeah. mentality up here it's it's tough when you're when you're struggling and maybe your family's struggling you're struggling personally you're not yeah. Maybe you're producing well on the pitch, but you're not exactly happy outside of the pitch. Yeah. That has an effect. So these are all really positive things. Yeah, he's producing on and off the pitch. So, <laughs> yeah. hey, all right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Keeping it on track. Uh, it's, a, on. it's a family show sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, moving on from that, uh, Caleb Wiley, he oh. uh, was named in CIES uh, football uh, for their year's best 11 for the 2004 born players. And uh, yeah, that's that makes a ton of sense. I mean, he is, I mean, but that's the thing, this is in the world. So, in the, the world, yeah, the likes of other players like Jao Neves, like Gavi, yes. like Romeo Lavia, which I'm sure you are ecstatic to see his name being a Chelsea fan. And yeah, I mean, it's also Ferguson on here, Garnacho. I mean, these are no slouches in terms it's, of. It's a big fucking deal. It's yeah. important that, you know, MLS shouts out to the league. They've popped up on a few of these top tens at a few different positions. We've got some talented youngsters out there. Also, it's still shocking for me to think that people were born in 2004 and are playing uh, professional soccer. Yes. I feel very old. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to fixate on that, I think. Uh, no. the, the, the thing to really know is that Caleb Wiley, he's making waves around the world. People are noticing... And yeah, it's just a matter of time before the transfer rumors start to get a little heavier sure. and yep. a little bit probably more real. Right now, it's yeah, some whispers of you know some smoke. This will be a big year for him if uh, he if he carries on and does even just a, a little better, builds on the previous season. You betcha those rumors are gonna start to solidify if it's you know confirmed in year two that it wasn't just yeah you know, kind of a good year and then he drops off. If he carries on. Oh yeah, 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 and it's uh, I mean he's he's that player that for us you know he uh, he showed a difference in kind of the quality. I mean yeah. Andrew Grootman, really good player, but man, mm -hmm. like he he just solidified that left back spot, and I mean you know I think there's levels that he is about to reach that are very Agreed. exciting. So, but. Uh, getting into the transfer rumors now. So, yeah. uh, the big one, Stian Gregerson from Bordeaux, uh, a league du side, but, uh, Bordeaux. yeah. Bordeaux, cheers. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, yeah, classing it up tonight with some wine. But, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, LA United, they are nearing a deal to sign the Norway International and the, uh, Apparently agreed upon the fee, according to Tom Bogert, is two million. Uh, it's not finalized quite yet, apparently, but it's expected to get there. We have been uh, linked to him for uh, about a few weeks now, I would say. But uh, yeah, he's a 28-year-old, made 75 appearances for Bordeaux in League 1 and 2. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, him being, I think, in a Norway international is uh, is really big. I think. I mean. Norway, no slouch, and uh, in terms of the level of talent on that team, and I think what he would bring is something that uh, maybe we're lacking: is that type of uh, European worldly experience in, at the center back position, and uh, it could really, you know, be something that's. I mean, Ligue 2 as a shopping market, 
obviously we've been doing quite well in there with uh, yeah. the likes of Yumba, with the likes Good of Shanti value. Silva. Uh, I mean, yeah, what, what do you think about this uh, potential move? I, I think if it's the it's the longer way away. Mm-hmm. Um, his stats numbers are under miles, but uh, comparable in terms of um, number of percentage of his winning his duels, both in the air and on the ground. Um, you know, I, I think this is what we're going to see more of, of these kind of longer term, lower league, mid table signings, players that maybe are not looking at Atlanta as a stepping stone mm. to the next step in their career, but are perfectly happy being here for an extended period of time, three plus years. Mm. And I think he might be fine here um, adjusting a bit easier because we are leaning into that European uh, market a bit more with, with our players and not maybe as much as South American, like we did out the gate from 2017, 19, everything was coming from South America, everything. Right. So he'll have some friends here with, with Muyamba and, um, you know, even Yorgos, there's some European flavor and he might um, adjust a, a little bit better, but seems on point for me. Um, yeah, I, I think it could be a good thing. Good value player, you know, yeah. it, it feels very much like what we have been seeing over the past year. Right, and it's that you know, two million, not too high. Uh, it could be something that's uh, you know, he uh, probably mm-hmm. is probably more of a TAM player, which very much is what we need. I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If high we... TAM, but not. We'll, we'll pay less than we're paying Miles. Exactly. We'll save a bit money if Miles goes, which I assume he's mm-hmm. going. We're not looking at mm-hmm. um, at this guy yeah. with certainty that Miles is staying. So. Right. Utilize, deploy that money you save on someone else or on him. Yeah, mm-hmm. seems yeah. like good business. Right, and especially as well his size. Uh, I believe it's six four. He's hey, also yeah, not not terribly slow either. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, of pace on him. Uh, not not to say that, like he's a pace merchant or anything, but he's yeah, he's got uh, some ability to be able to you know maybe be the last line of defense. Uh, so. Yeah. You know, Seems something... solid. He's winning. He's at that close to seventy percent, or just slightly under, in terms of, you know, the the important defensive stats of, uh, you know, uh, duels, tackles, one things of that nature. That mm-hmm. right where you want that kind of player to be at that level. Mm-hmm. I think it's good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, another defender uh, that we're looking at apparently, at least according to Diario Diaz, and mm-hmm. uh, as well as HCH. Uh, television, uh, but basically some Honduran, uh, pretty much uh, sources. They are reporting that Atlanta United are showing strong interest, quote unquote, in Honduras international uh, Daniel Maldonado, and he was on loan with LAFC from Montagua in 2023. Yep. But uh, he's got 21 appearances with the club past this past season, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously. LAFC, you know, were in the final, uh, but uh, yeah, he didn't play terribly much. He looks like maybe more just a depth piece, but uh, someone that's you know knows uh, at least uh, you know kind of uh, Champions League football, football at least in North America. Uh, that's yep. a good thing, um, yep. and you know you have a player that basically yeah has that uh, that experience. Would it be the worst thing if we, uh, if this rumor was true? No, not at all. If it's the right money, yeah. Um, That's you key. know, he didn't get as as much playing time as I think he would have have liked. His stats are actually a little bit under um, Gregerson. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a right money type move. I I agree with you. Uh, it seems a bit more depthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and if he's cool with that, and the money's right. It fits, yeah. Cool, yeah, no problem. But I, I don't think he's um, a Miles uh, replacement starter type. I, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, and it's if it's it that. happens, right? Exactly. But uh, you know, I think it's an interesting rumor, nonetheless. It's somebody that's uh, you know brings some experience that we absolutely need in the back line because currently, uh, what we have is very very young and uh, not probably at the required True. level to be. Uh, yeah, True. you know. Kind of what what we True. absolutely need. 
is and he's got some mls experience that could be helpful in terms of just transitioning right over to you know another club yeah it's exactly. useful so yep uh definitely a player that uh is intriguing uh maybe not gonna be a top tier type of player but yeah mm -hmm. you gotta bring that experience uh, moving on from that, uh, you have Santiago Sosa uh, linked with an Argentine side, according to Cesar Luis Merlo. Uh, yeah, there are talks for him to arrive on a year-long loan with a purchase option. And uh, even Racing Club's manager, Gustavo Costas, he has uh, confirmed that uh, there is interest in bringing him in. So definitely fascinating. But uh, yeah, he Great fell club. out of favor. You know, and yeah, Ross and Klub is a big side, like you're saying, in Argentina. Big like, team. Yeah. yeah. Do you Lots feel of history like, there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give us your thoughts on Sosa and, uh, you know, maybe exiting LA United. For the best. He, he's not going to fit the profile of this team um, and didn't mm -hmm. towards the uh, latter half of the season. And Rossing would be a big move for him. And I think we would get the appropriate amount of money and probably a bit more uh, from a club of that stature. Um, that's fairly well funded. They have had some financial issues in the past, most recently in 2020 and 21. But who didn't? Um, looking at you, Barcelona. Um, I, I think if he's happy and it, and it works... I think it's for the best for him to move on for him and for us, freeze up another slot to bring in a player that is um, just going to work better for us. I think he was the unfortunate victim of some circumstances. His, his level did drop too. It's not like, you know, the club just did him wrong or changed and he just doesn't fit. Like his play dropped noticeably. It did. So, um, yeah, it seems like seems like good business. Uh, once again, we always seem to find really good exits for most players. I mean, we've had to do some buyouts for sure. Yeah, but we we do some pretty good exit strategies for these players in terms of they're happy, happy as they can be, and we recoup most, if not all of or more than what we paid for them. Yeah. And so, yeah, it would be, uh, you know, free up a spot in the U22 uh, designated player, sure. uh, you know, kind of designations yeah. and roles, which is super key because, yeah, it's still a mechanism that we have to play in. And yeah, Forgot so, so, he was on the U22. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Wow. And so, hmm. yeah, it is something that we have to contend with. And I think, yeah, we can bring in somebody that's a little bit more talented that uh, I think brings more potential of what we need. So, I think it's a good move as well, uh, if that can happen, and it, I think, would happen soon. But speaking of that, Franco Abara, he also uh, is reportedly close uh, to being a signing for Argentine side Rosario Central. Uh, that's according to Fernando Carafiello, or Fiello. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Abara, of course, with the... Uh, he uh, got shipped off uh, because of the roster mechanisms of the U22 to Toronto yeah, FC. Tough. And he famously mentioned that, uh, yeah, he did not want to go to the worst team in MLS. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, he, he went there, he played. It wasn't really the best, uh, maybe, scenario and season for him either in terms of uh, with Toronto. But with us obviously there was potential that uh you know he could grow into a role but Muyamba just really you know i think when he came in uh it just showed what we were missing completely and uh abara uh, i'm gonna be honest i don't think he was missed really i mean maybe the Knocking, first couple weeks right? but yeah but Knocking. it's uh yeah yeah shocking truly but, because when that move happened man yeah we were mm -hmm. i'll raise my hand mm -hmm. we were all up in arms about that oh yeah and it worked and it it worked, it worked and out. i feel for him i really do because that's a that's an awful yeah. situation i hope this works for him if this does come through and he's and he's happier because i think he is a good guy i think he is a good player mm -hmm. he did bring a lot to this team you know especially this this year he was playing his heart out and doing what he could um but yeah. he's the most likely suspect to to yeah. be moving on i i did, didn't see him carrying on um, with the team as it's currently constructed there's no no room for him now right uh i mean i think 
you, you made fantastic points there. It's basically that Franco Bar he gave everything for the badge. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, everything. I, we can't really fault him for, uh, no. you know, kind of not being able to play beyond his talents, I suppose. And yeah. that's really the crux of it. And, yeah, I, you know, aside like Rosario Central, who's uh, right now in the top four in uh, the Argentine mm -hmm. division, Ain't too shabby to uh, to go to. So, uh, yeah, if Better I were him too. Better than Toronto. Yeah, exactly. If I were him, I would go. I would, uh, I would definitely I think, do that. I think, so. you, I think you take that deal if it if all parties and it all works out. Yeah, you can find a I think, solution. I think that would yeah. think that would be best. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Good for him. Hope it does. He deserves yeah. it. He's a good guy, good player, and uh, Rosario will be better off for him. Yes, indeed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you might notice that there are a couple of midfielders being uh, rumored out. So who might be rumored coming in? Well, uh, yes, the uh, this is going to be really hard to say because I haven't spoken it out loud yet. So bear with me here. Here but, we go. Yeah, according to Tomas Wadlerosik, uh, yes, that Polish midfielder Bartos Sliz, he uh, has made or has been given some offers uh, from not only LA United but also Serie A side Lecce and uh, yeah I mean 24 year old 5'11 center mid he's uh, purportedly leaning toward Atlanta but uh, yeah the five stripes scouts also went to his matches apparently uh, there might be an offer for apparently 2 million euros uh, now, Sliz's contract, it expires in a year, and he's reportedly ready to leave. But uh, it's not known whether Ligia Warsaw, his uh, current club, will let him go in the winter. But uh, he's definitely getting interest from uh, us and a Serie A side, which to me is a little baffling why he wouldn't go to Serie A, actually. But uh, yeah, you know, in his uh, as well, in terms of this, uh, this season, he's played 33 games, over 2,600 minutes. Uh, and, yeah, he's more of a defensive midfielder, uh, can play center mid at times, but also has six caps for the Polish national team uh, and has played in the Europa uh, League and the Champions League. So uh, definitely, yeah, I mean, a player that has some... Uh, pedigree that's uh, you know in terms of at least European experience he's still young but holy crap I mean you know what, what do you feel like uh, you know in this signing like uh, how does it make you feel rather just looking at his experience and his kind of top line stats he seems a little bit more in the vein of an Ibarra mm -hmm. a little more aggressive a bit more of a, a destroyer which we could use in the midfield i don't know if we'll be able to outbid or out entice you know leche um Serie a just because you know they do have european leagues and other leagues around the world have more flexibility when it comes to fees they can pay and salaries things of that nature um i would love to hear the sales pitch yeah. from garth from Boca scouts, whatever they're they if they've had any communication with this player formally or informally, and pitching the project to him and his role and what they can offer him, he is still young. So, a player of that caliber, where where he's in the experience he's had so far, making the choice to come to MLS at 24 years old instead of a, a pretty decent Serie A side. That'd be a pretty big statement for for me because you're 24, you know that's that's the time to be moving up in Europe and you want to come here for two three years. You could still go back at you know mm -hmm. three year contract, go back at 27, 28 years old and mm -hmm. kick on from there. Um, it would be a pretty big deal, I think. Um, if we could if we could get it done, mm -hmm. he's gonna be high tam like yep. high tam, mm -hmm. high tam. But we may have the the cap space for it with all these outgoings that we've got. It it might work. Um, I mean, if, it's, if it can, yeah. it's, it's, it's it seems the most unlikely. I'll, mm. I'll put it that way. Of mm. uh, probability seems low. I'll be pleasantly surprised. And like I said, I I'll love to know the details of how it got done if it gets done. Yeah. 
Because it's that. I mean, the Italian league is a top five league in the world. And I don't think it's five. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. And so yeah. it's, man, like in terms of the type of player, uh, I mean, well, it's exactly what we need for sure. Uh, because Muyamba, uh, you know, I think he's a little bit of a tweener, probably a little bit of a cross between a six mm -hmm. and an eight. And I think we've seen with Muyamba that he can play further forward a little bit too. And uh, has an eye for goal at times. So, you know, I, I, it makes sense that uh, you bring in, you know, kind of a, a different type of uh, profile to kind of complement this type of guy. And, you know, both of them being uh, probably very tidy on the ball and what we need. That, that's exactly what the doctor has been ordering, but uh, we haven't been able to get. But, uh, yeah, like you're saying, it might be a bit difficult. It might be... Uh, a stride too far but I like the ambition to a degree um, I love it but I think there's also this it's you know he's the type of player that has not moved uh, really outside of uh, that yeah. league and you know Ligia Warsaw I mean it's it's not the biggest league but there is also you have the effect of a player that will be a fish out of water for yeah. some time and yeah, it might affect you know like it would be a different thing if he was a team a player that pretty much bounced around uh, and went to a lot of other places. But it's actually this actually hurts him a little bit. I kind of think it does, and I don't mean that as a slight to MLS. Yeah, like it would hurt him in his career and his future to move here. But it it might mm -hmm. again like you. I love the ambition. Uh, from this club and this league to go out and sign this type of player, this young talent that a Serie A side, top, you know, a decent Serie A side is seriously considering that we're competing against that. That should tell you the level that this guy is at. If that type of team from that type of league is really gunning for him. Um, so I love the ambition that we're going to gun for him too. I just, it seems a little bit too unlikely just for. You know, it's just the reality of, of MLS right. and where we are in stature and the salary cap restrictions, all those things kind of working against us to sign these types of players. It could happen. Not likely. Right. And so if it does happen, fantastic. This is uh, you know, the type of player player profile that we need to be thrilled. bringing in. So, uh, yep. If it does happen, we will, of course, have it for you. But um, yes. Uh, moving on from that, LA United 2, they agreed to transfer Jonathan Villal or Villal uh, to Atletico, Atletico San Luis of Liga MX. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's uh, obviously a player that wasn't going to maybe get too many looks on the first team. But uh, yeah, I don't know if there was a fee that was actually uh, discussed and actually you know, put out into the world, but uh, yeah, you know, I think sometimes you kind of do right by the players sometimes too, and mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, it's definitely he's a player that has potential. We'll uh, be keen to see how uh, he gets on there. Maybe he's a player we can bring back if he, you know, uh, I'll be any... tracking him. I hope it's another example of like you're saying, doing right by the player. Like we we find homes. Uh, for guys, if they have shown an ability, and you know, and and um, it, it doesn't always work out, i.e., Jackson Conway, yeah, uh, you know, it, it just it just hasn't didn't work out for him at Phoenix Rising, uh, which is kind of unfortunate considering he could have won a trophy, uh, lower league, but still a, a, a trophy. Uh, came back and, um, but if you have the the talent and and you put in the work, um, and you help create opportunities for yourself the club will also this club is very good at helping you um you know grow those opportunities uh, for the most part and uh, i wish him luck i'm gonna track him and like you said yeah, maybe you know yeah. doors never close could come back exactly no. if he balls out uh well enough sure. yeah he might yeah. uh attract us back again so but sure. Uh, but yeah, so that is the news, and that gets us into the mailbag, and you guys send in these questions through IG Story. Please continue to do so, and we might answer your question in the future. But the first question comes from 
uh, Geo Blake, and I mean, it's a grim question a little bit, but uh, what coach would be good for Atlanta if Pineda doesn't do well again this season? It's going to put you on the spot a little bit, but I know it's uh, oh who's available. Are we, yeah. are we talking coaches that are, are currently available or just my dream coach? Or Let's go with like... pipe dream and then we'll go with maybe realistically available uh, just to give ourselves a little bit more time to, to think. But uh let me help you out here as well, just because... Pipe, uh, pipe yeah. dream. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, MLS pipe dream, I guess. It, like, uh, in terms of, like, someone that might realistically come to MLS. Geo. Mm. Savarese. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I mean, Savarese, he's still out of contract. I was a little shocked that yeah. uh, Charlotte didn't go off after him and instead went, instead went with Dean Smith. Which is, uh, and I guess I mean, Frank Lampard was also up for that as well. Which I thought Lampard was going to get it. I thought mm-hmm. from the moment they were looking for a coach, Frank seemed like the right guy um, for that. But they went with Dean. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd Savarese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if if in that MLS realm of, yeah. of anybody. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I said this before Pinedo was hired, um, and honestly, probably around the time that. Uh, you know, Frank de Boer was uh, was hired, but um, yeah, I mean, I would prefer uh, kind of a, a younger type of um, type of head coach. And now I'm blanking on his name for some reason. Holy crap! Newcastle's head coach. Uh, oh my god. Oh, Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe. That would have been fantastic. Obviously, now he's in you know greener pastures. Sure. But yeah, yeah. If uh, things go to shit, I, I think it's somebody that uh, you know with a kind of Newcastle and Lee United. Kind of connection, possibly. You don't want uh, Big Sam, Sam Allardyce to come here and. Uh... I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, pass. Okay. Yes, not right. not the type of football I want to play. Uh, not the type of football I want to see at all ever. Um, there's reasons why that uh, he has <laughs> mostly failed yes. at uh, yeah. every stop. But um, you know, he, he's good at uh, you know that new manager bounce. That's that's what he's good for, I guess. So, I suppose I suppose so, and I, I would assume Wayne Rooney is out of the question, yes. Uh, yeah, he's a hard fuck no uh, as well. Uh, <laughs> this is a family show? Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. The <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, next question uh, yeah. comes from uh, R. Dernelfi. Double pivot CM or pure defensive central midfielder to replace Hosetu? Now, obviously, we talked about Bartos Sliz uh, as well with his profile, but okay, say that rumor didn't exist. Mm. Double pivot central midfielders or a pure defensive midfielder to replace Hosatu? Kind of depends on what else is around him. Because um... Almada, him being in the side, well, you know, currently, <sighs> that. Yeah, you know, the the double pivot central midfielder, that means we don't have a central mid or defensive central midfielder. Yeah. That. Um, hmm. I'm going pure, I, I, I think, as as things currently stand. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Almada moves, that maybe changes the equation a bit. Mm-hmm. Um. Neda, I don't know if he's really equipped to. I, I just think it's a little bit simpler mm. yeah. without using a double pivot. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. 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 That's, that's kind this. of where I'm landing. Yeah. Because uh, there's the aspect of this that Thiago Mata, he he's not exactly playing a pure 10 role to a degree. No, he he's is. not. Uh, but this day and age, it's pretty much you have pretty much roving eights. In the midfield, pretty much right, and I think that's it's kind not what of, it, right. It's it's not what the game was 10, 20 years ago. We're not playing that anymore. We're just right. your ten playmaker. Mm-hmm. It's just not the game, the modern game anymore. Right, it's not. you just don't have that luxury to be able to no. have somebody that doesn't do defensive work now. Right, you know, Almada isn't the most fantastic defensively, but uh, you know, he is being asked to do some of that at times, and uh, and credit to him, yeah. he does it. He does. And he does it. He may not always come off, right? But he works. Right. He works hard. Uh, but there's also the aspect of, 
you know, there's times when we went really offensive, and he was pretty much the la he was like the last line of uh, our midfield, and you know, he would pretty much be that person that uh, is dictating everything. And I mean, just how hard it is to get the ball off of him. I mean, sometimes like you didn't even need the you know a defensive midfielder, and uh, you know, he's just like, okay, give him <laughs> give Almada the ball and let him work, and. Uh, you know, the other team's not having the ball. Okay. But obviously that's against more of the, you know, lower sides. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we have to have a defensive midfielder uh, that's, you know, breaking up the play. That's also dictating uh, from deep, a deep playmaker, if you will. And yeah, uh, I think that's the profile that we need. And, uh, you know, Muyamba, whether he's that guy or he's you know just ahead of him a little bit, you know yeah. that's the question because he's shown yeah. he's been able to play a little bit of both, albeit Columbus Crew kind of exposed a little bit of some of the frailties uh, away. So yeah, so that's yeah. kind of what we need to figure out is okay, is that just against that side or is it against top sides and we need uh, you know somebody that can can fill that greater uh, skill set. Yeah. So, yeah. But, um, okay. And uh, last question also comes from R. Dernelfi. Uh, Do you think the team will take care of transfer business early so they can avoid visa delays to start the season? AKA like last season where? <laughs> yes. I point. think it's so much of it is largely out of a team's hands. Our team's any team in MLS, we all struggle with the same things. The market is different each year. This isn't a, you know, a question of a team just procrastinating. Yeah. It it doesn't it doesn't work mm -hmm. like that. If we can make the deals now, we'd make them now. We'd get it done. Love to have more time to not wait on stupid visas and stuff. And hopefully, visa process it's been getting better mm -hmm. year to year. COVID wrecked everything. Yeah, it wrecked all of that. So. Hopefully those processes are, are a little better. Some countries easier than others, yeah. um, like we saw with Jamal uh, this past summer and how that saga that dro drug out for a month and a half. We didn't even get to see the guy, really. Uh, that arguably hurt us. That. Yeah, I mean, we uh, win. For yeah. sure it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh when he got yellow card yeah. accumulation, uh, right. you know, just a... Uh, yeah, having to rely on Miguel Berry. That was, yes. Hey, we found a home for Miguel Berry, too. We did. I this know. club does good business finding homes for players that yeah. maybe shouldn't have a home. And um, yeah. Not in yeah. MLS, anyway. Yeah, I don't not think in MLS. Miguel Berry is that level of player. But uh, no. it is what it is. But uh, it is, this is it not is. shit on Miguel Berry. Uh, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. That, that happens enough. But yeah. the transfers, I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, but a lot of things just kind of have to, to go right. And I'm sure the club's making every effort for those things to go right. Uh, gotta wait and see. It'd be nice. It would yeah. be real nice. There are teams that do leave it late, to be fair. And, uh, you know, I, sure. I speak from experience as well that, uh, you know, Arsenal were that club in 2010s where basically, yeah, you know, okay. You have like a, the likes of like a Mesut Ozil who, yes, goes yeah. on deadline day. I mean, there's just so many instances of, okay, uh, yeah, you could have done the business earlier. Uh, if you had made the moves and in inquiries earlier, made the uh, the interest known uh, at a kind of just better start of the window, then you have kind of more uh, ability to maybe possibly get the type of player that you need uh, with backups as a choice too, instead of you know having to pay the premium. On deadline. Well, I mean, but also so. European teams in the Premier League or wherever, they kind of do that to themselves. I say mm -hmm. this as a Chelsea fan. Mm -hmm. We have done this to ourselves for two years. Uh, MLS sides, a little more hampered um, and not so much shooting themselves in their own foot. There's teams that do it. <laughs> let's, let's be real. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've really done that so much as like an example that you're giving where a team has more control and has just maybe not made good choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what it is. And so, you know, sometimes uh, LA United 
sometimes leave it late. Uh, maybe they're holding out for money. Uh, looking at the Could Miguel Almiron, uh, you know, transfer. Of course, uh, they were. Yep. You know, player was getting yep. upset. Uh, agent getting upset. Uh, team getting upset in terms of uh, Newcastle. So, you know, uh, that that stuff happens. But I think, larger part, LA United have generally been, uh, you know, kind of more proactive than uh, than leaving. LA I agree. So. And I think the, for what it's worth, the front office has bought themselves a little good grace with this past summer. This was a big summer, and they got it right. If they hadn't, boy, that leash is very, very short from the fans oh, because for of sure. you know things that just have not gone well. But credit to them, summer went pretty well. Yeah. So I think we can afford them uh, a little grace, a little patience because we were all up in arms. And again, I'm raising my hand guilty as sin about that uh, in June and July, but it did work out. So let's see what happens here. And it's going to get nervy. We all want them to get it done now in the next week. But um, I think they've bought a little bit of the, that trust back, not yeah. implicitly, you know, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. A, a little bit, it's, a little bit. Right. And it's this, I mean, you know, we didn't buy Messi, of course, but I think we had the third best window in the last transfer uh, window uh, of a f- any of the fair assessment. Teams. Yeah. I mean, Columbus, obviously, I think second. Uh, yes. You know, obviously, they won MLS yes. Cup. So, you know, they Has have to. a shout to possibly be number one. But it is, I mean, you didn't get Lionel Messi. So it's like. Okay. They're doing good business for what it's worth already. They're only yeah. getting stronger. Exactly. Um, so so they'll, they're going to be set up. Well, we get to play them first. Oh, yes. Exactly. Lucky right. us. Uh, hey, man. Maybe it is. Bring it. Bring <laughs> it. You know what? That's how this team used to be. Of like, Let's yep. not shy away from challenges. Give me the test. Give me the test right now, and let's see where we're at. I'm good yeah. with it. And I think you can make an argument that earlier is better. Don't wait until for them to get into you know, mid-season yeah. form. So. Yeah, let me see how we stack up against the best right now, and that'll tell us where we're at and inform decisions going on you know, later on in the season. Give me that test right now. Indeed, indeed. But, yep. yep, that is the last question, and that's pretty much the episode, except for the question of the day. And the question oh of the day is... What's the greatest need for the roster we must resolve first? Let us know in those comments below. But, I mean, yeah, Glenn, if you want to answer it, I'm definitely all ears as well. A six. A six. Yep. Exactly. A six. Uh, you know, um, a ball-winning destroyer or whatever, like somebody solidifying mm-hmm. that midfield. Um, and then, obviously, you know, if that's barring, like, Tiago going, obviously to replace that yeah. or miles going which it seems like we've already got some things in the work with uh, or for that that's obvious too but um yeah six right there for me for me anyhow yeah and uh yeah definitely uh you know viewers let us know what you guys think in the comments below really looking forward to what you guys have to say but guys that is the episode there and there And remember to like, share, comment, subscribe for Glenn. I'm AJ. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you in the next video.